That was a really small piece of bacon. I was hoping it would be larger. <laughs> well, it looks larger if you hold it closer to the camera. That's true. <laughs> All right. So this morning, good morning. It is January. No, it's not January anymore. It's February. It's February. Hello, February. February 1st. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2024 on Thursday, and we are in the book of John, and we're reading chapter 8, and I believe today we have verse 31 through 47. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So maybe we'll take a couple passes through this. Um... Who would like the second pass? Looks like Dylan would. Yeah, I can. Okay. Awesome. I'll pray and get us started. Mm. Lord God, Almighty, thank you for our rest. Thank you for this time in the Gospel of John where we can read about you, Jesus, and learn more about you, who you are, and who, whose we are. Um, Lord, soften our hearts to your word this morning. We want to learn from you. We want to know you better. And um, learn to follow you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, yesterday, there was a dispute over who Jesus is. And um, Jesus talks about he is from the Father. He is from above, out of this world. Jesus has authority to judge. He is trustworthy because he comes from the Father and he only speaks what the Father tells him to say. And then at the end, he tells them that um, when they have lifted him up, then they will know um, that he is who he says he is. And that was where we left off yesterday. So verse 31, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you're looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I've seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. And Abraham is our father, they answered. Well, if you were Abraham's children, Jesus said, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who was told, who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. And you are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own way. Um, I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, 
for there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe in me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe in me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says, and the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. <clears throat> to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because I, you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say, you belong to your father, the devil, and you will want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Okay. <clears throat> Hard words from Jesus. Things got spicy. Indeed. All right, so... What's standing out this morning? When Satan speaks, he speaks his own native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Why does that stand out for you? Because he's done that to me recently. Mm -hmm. And I've listened to him. And then I've recognized that I've been listening to lies. And then I'm like, oh, I think I know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. He's tricky, that guy. <laughs> oh, man. That's when you pull out that spiritual warfare prayer, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just hung it on my refrigerator last night. Yeah, that's awesome. What prayer is that? It's classified, Dylan. We can't. Oh, okay. I understand. <laughs> You'd have to kill me. I have a spiritual warfare prayer. Um, Damien, didn't you send that to the guys? I scanned it and sent it to you. I think I did. Um, I think it was to the Tuesday group. Oh, maybe you're, yeah, maybe you're right. Um, <clears throat> I can find it. I'm forwarded on. Yeah, it just, it's a, like Daniel just said, when you, when you realize you're, you've taken the wrong fork in the road, when things are happening to you, um, it gives you the ability to pray the Lord's power over what's trying to take control of your life. 
Hmm. So yeah, Damien, if you'd send that on to him, that'd be great. There you go. I just put it in the Zoom chat. Oh, nice. Okay, Thanks, cool. Ooh, Daniel shared a file. Sweet. <clears throat> I think what stood out to me was the verse 43 that he repeats. Um, why do you not understand what I'm saying? You know, the times that we talked, including yesterday, about being lifted up and, you know, eating my flesh, drinking my blood. There are times that he speaks in such deep metaphorical ways that how does he expect us to understand what he's saying? Huh. You know, and even back when I was not a believer, this book didn't mean anything to me. The words of Jesus didn't mean anything to me. I was the same way. I remember trying to read the Bible a little bit, like I cracked it open before I was a believer at some point, a couple times in my life. And I looked at it and I was like, this makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But then the opposite, when he, in his perfect timing, says, okay, Damien, it's time. Get in the word. And it does. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. I was, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was my experience when I first start, first came. Like, I, I just kind of started to open my heart to God and the possibility that he was real. I just opened my heart to it. And I was like, okay. If you're a real God, you know, show yourself to me kind of thing. And then I, and then when I started reading, then all of a sudden I was, then it started to make sense. And not only like intellectually, but it started to make sense in my heart. Like he was really speaking to me through the word to certain circumstances in my life that I was concerned about or, you know, that I was struggling with. It was all like, okay, wow, this is different. <laughs> It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I remember vividly um, having done a very superficial fast Bible study, but I can remember making the statement, yeah, I can believe this. And that was my conversion. Hmm. But yeah, why do you not understand what I am saying? It's because you can't hear my word. that interesting he is the word so if you don't accept him you're not going to accept what he's saying i guess you're not going to be able to hear it you know <clears throat> dylan did you see that prayer i did i haven't read it yet okay. but i saved it thank you daniel mm -hmm. all right so yeah, what else is go ahead sorry um what was standing out to me is the slave to sin, because hmm. you could you could talk about that forever. What that what that means? Like you think about the original sin, the flip sin of the flesh, hmm. Um, hmm. the devil being the the king of this world. Um, as human beings, we're predisposed to sin, but we don't recognize it as sin most of the time. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. that, that was that was a revelation that I recently had. It's like all, all these things I'm doing in my daily life, like just the smallest little things. I'm like, oh, that's like that's sinful. That's that's not correct. And I like I heard somebody describe sin as um, it, sin is just is just a distraction. That's all. It, it's a distraction from what um, it's early. So th words are hard. <laughs> it's a distraction from um, you, your ability to like, achieve your best possible self. It's, like, mm. it's, it's just all, it's all <clears throat> the, it's all the crap that you have to scrape off yourself. And it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to even recognize that that like what it is 
Agreed. It, it's of, of the devil and Jesus is of the spirit and we're of the flesh. John six sixty three, right? Hmm. The, uh, the spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Um, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I can't remember where that, where that's at, but so I think about all these, all these lines and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's so, I mean, it seems so obvious in hindsight when you're, when you're thinking about it, but you know, in the moment, the Jews don't even recognize that they're being oppressed, you know, this, Mm -hmm. um, where's that? Yeah. I'm kind of, kind of rambling a little bit. When a slave is born into slavery, right? If their parents are slaves and they're born into slavery and it's all they know, it's almost like they don't re- realize that there is something wrong. It's just normal. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. he, he says, the Jew says, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been in bondage to anyone. How, how can a Jew say that? <laughs> but right. Egypt... Mm-hmm. Like all through history, they've been in bondage to people. They're Rome. they're in bondage currently to Rome. Right. Yeah. In this, that, 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 <laughs> that was my question too. Yeah. I was and they get, so they they can't even recognize that they're act, they're slaves. But Jesus goes, no, you're like you're a you're a slave to sin. Like that's that's what the problem is. So, <clears> whoa, <throat> that's that that's really cool. That's really deep. I want to read something. Says the sun. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling a little bit, it's but. Okay. The, and then he says, the son will make you free. And the slave, what does it say? The slave does not continue in the house forever. And in my notes, it's saying it's a, it's a callback to um, Ishmael and Jacob. Uh, mm. Ish, right, is that, is that his name, right? Ishmael? Ishmael, yeah. Yes. Ishmael. It's this, yeah, the son of Hagar, the, the housemaid. So I, don't, I don't know if they actually call her a slave, but. Um, and Isaac and was it, the other son, not Jacob. And oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, it's Isaac. Jacob, then, Jacob was next after, yeah, yes, Isaac. So I, Isaac is a legitimate, um, lawful son and continues the proper um, Abrahamic lineage. And Ishmael <clears throat> is cast out. And that's which is kind of cruel. It's like you know, you don't want to, you know, it's not Ishmael's fault that he was born the way that he was but that's right. old old testament uh but at the same time god did meet with hagar and say your descendants your son ishmael will be the father of a great nation of his own mm-hmm. not that i'll do anything with him but yeah he'll build himself up to be huge and sure enough he has With Islam, right? Islam considers yeah. Ishmael there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind of where the where it splits, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's about, interesting. We talk about being slaves. You know, Jesus is talking about being slaves to sin here, and and Paul has a great um in his letter to the Romans. He's got a great kind of perspective on that. And uh, I was just going to read that quickly. Um, This is Romans chapter 6. It says, what should we say then? And I won't read the whole chapter, but just through verse 7. What should we say then? Should we continue to sin so that God's kindness will increase? That's unthinkable. As far as sin is concerned, we have died. We have died. So how can we still live under sin's influence? Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And when we were baptized into his death, we were placed into the tomb with him. As Christ was brought back from death to life by the glorious power of the Father, so we too should live a new kind of life. If we've become united with him in a death like this, Certainly, we also will be united with him when we come back to life as he did. We know that the person we used to be was crucified with him to put an end to sin in our bodies. Because of this, we are no longer slaves to sin. The person who has died has been freed from sin. 
So Paul, exp, exp, I guess, expounds on the, the concept that Jesus is talking about. Christ put to death the sin in us on the cross and in the tomb. And, and we, we were, our, our bodies, our spiritual bodies were risen with him I suppose when he rose from the dead and so now we are no longer slaves but we have a choice we can make a choice we can choose something other than sin now we can choose God we're free <laughs> free to choose What else? Anything else standing out today? Warren is a new believer. Has anything jumped out to you? Um, what Dylan talked about, uh, the slave and the sin, was one of the things I was going to say. Um, just a lot of times I know I don't talk during this. It's just because like a lot of the stories you guys are referenced, I haven't even read them yet. It's taken me forever just to even get through Samuel. Um, but it's really cool to hear. But uh, I would say probably the sin um, and the slave, um, just because, I mean, I agree with like what Dylan says, like just the things in life that you wouldn't consider sin um, are secretly kind of the things that are holding you back in life. And it seems like that's something I'm kind of learning as well is like the things that I just did on a daily basis that never really I never really thought too much about. Um, I'm quickly learning are things that are have been kind of holding me back in life or I feel now after eliminating them in my life are kind of were holding me back and it's kind of giving me bigger steps forward, which I like and it's kind of <clears throat> cool to see today. Wow. Especially because of that I'm going through at the moment. Different kind of awareness, huh? Yeah. Yep. It's so crazy how it just without God, without the word, the Bible, his truth, it's just so easy to like ha have these blind spots where for me, I mean, it's just like, I'm just not aware of what I'm doing or what I've, you know, what I've been doing, how I've been either selfish or maybe unfor you know holding bitterness like i don't really realize it until the word the bible shines a light <laughs> on what's going on in my heart and then i'm and then i i'm like convicted i'm like oh wow god i'm sorry and sometimes i don't say i'm sorry sometimes i'm like resistant i think I kind of know what's going on, but I don't want to like face it, you know, but it's an interesting dance that I have with the Lord, just a constant ongoing journey, becoming aware of my sin and I guess submitting it to him and letting him change me never ends. Well, I guess it will one day, but no, it certainly does not ever end, <laughs> but I just want to say too that I, I am a super new uh, believer too. So, but that doesn't doesn't stop me from stumbling through, <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to wrap my head around. So if yeah, if, if there's anything you want to say, Lauren, don't don't be uh, don't be afraid to sound stupid because I <laughs> like like Daniel for instance is like a encyclopedia when it comes to the Bible. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm like, and I haven't, I haven't read probably 80% of the old Testament. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's almost even just like an inner conflict with myself. Just, and I'm sure it's just because I'm a new believer too, or I'm really kind of not new, just really kind of starting to get into things that sometimes I feel like, am I fighting with myself right now inside my head? Or is this God trying to say, hey, I think you should try and veer away from this. You should try and stop doing this and do this instead. Mm. Yeah. Interesting, because I've been a believer for a while. 
And I still have those thoughts too. Yeah, that slave to sin line, man. That I've, I'm, I'm going to think about that all day. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I, I already, I already alluded to it, but it's, I mean, it's just like it's just the water that we swim in in the world is <laughs> is sin. It's it's so difficult to, you know, to not. I, breathe there's in. a reason why. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Dylan, that's why God says, put on the wetsuit of God. If you're going to swim in the water, use the protection, the armor. Mm -hmm. And then he, and then he flat out calls the, uh, the Jews. He flat out accuses the Jews of being sons of the devil. <laughs> That's pretty. Yeah, he goes right I, I, there. <laughs> I've said it 10 million times, but I'm like, how How did this guy escape these situations so <laughs> so much? I don't know. I guess, I guess the Jews didn't have the authority to, uh, like, arresting power. Mm, they, they didn't have the authority to try people. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe but that's why. But there was the one instance where they were ready to stone him for blaspheming yeah. in the temple. And they drug him outside and were going to throw him off a cliff. And he's like, he walked through the crowd and just escaped. Right. Yeah. Uh, what, how does, what is the wording? He, he went out amongst the, amidst them. I can't, I can't remember. Oh, I don't remember either. It, it, yeah. Very ambig, ambiguous. Right. I like the way that the chosen portrayed it. He just walks right through them. <laughs> yeah. And it's just... like, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. And then they're yeah. going to, they try to stone him. I think we're going to get to it tomorrow. He, he says, I, I pre-existed Abraham. We keep talking about Abraham. Mm. I'm before Abraham was, I am. And he call, flat out calls himself God. <laughs> and then they, yeah, again, they, they try to stone him. They, they lose it. Oh man, this is funny. Yeah, that's that's like my favorite mic drop moment in the in the book of John. Hmm. It's the end of chapter eight. Cool. Hmm. Cool. Awesome. <clears throat> and yeah, I just read the last verse of that section. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself and slipped away from the temple grounds. <sighs> So then yes. can you imagine 10 minutes later when their consciousness comes back and they realize, where did he go? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was here just a second ago. Yeah. Well, well, maybe it's like those um, those videos you see on those, those short videos on TikTok where the guy's holding up the curtain. He pulls the curtain up and oh, yeah. hides himself from his dog. And then <laughs> as he drops it, dashes off. <laughs> maybe that's what he did. The dogs are like... <laughs> um what was I gonna say? Oh, the other thing that's kind of interesting about all this is we gotta remember, you know, a couple days back or yesterday and the day before, kind of this is all actually part of the same scene. They're in the they're on the temple grounds and they're actually in the treasury of the temple mm. when all this is happening. And so there are these boxes, these like giving boxes with these huge trumpets, uh, like these big like opening trumpet things that you can throw money into. And there's different boxes, different things for different um, things you can give to at the temple. And so they're in this part of the temple that's like a kind of a big open area. It's like 200 feet by 200 feet. In the, in, but it's the treasury of the temple while all this is happening, including the woman that's brought and, and caught in adultery. Um, that's kind of the context of all of this that we're reading right now. It's interesting. But all right, guys. Well, yep. we should wrap up today. Yep. Um, I'll go ahead and pray us out, and then we'll go into our day and see what God has to say to us during our waking hours. Lord, 
thank you for this time. Thank you for these words. Um, the, the, the amazing reality that we are no longer slaves to sin. Even the revelation, Lord, that we were slaves to sin. <laughs> Didn't even realize that. And um, thank you for making us aware and bringing us into the light and putting us on this journey where you change us um, on a daily basis. You're changing us more and more uh, like you, God, and teaching us what it means to, to truly love you and love others and receive your love. So we submit to that today. Thank you for this truth and um, help us to live in it, walk in it, embrace it, uh, and embrace you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> All right, gents. Great. See you guys. Have a good See morning. Have a good rest of your day.